Last day. Yeah, rivers of the beach. No, no, keep going. Rivers of the beach is at 45 minutes now. Yeah. Well, we're going to do Kilimanjaro. We're going to do it out. I'm going to get the frogs. Kilimanjaro. Started right away, heading deep into the little Eturi forest. Forests like this one are home to many different types of animals. The natural colorings and markings can blend them in really well. So we've got to keep a sharp eye out. More than once, I've been just a few yards away from the house. I had to like a few thousand feet from here. Yeah, she's killing her. Like the one hiding out to the right. All the way to the right hand side of the clearing, in between the bushes and trees, you might see a little coffee walking around. Okapi were not first discovered by the Western world until 1901, which is pretty recent, relatively speaking. It didn't help that nobody believed them when they told people what they found. But that's because they told people they found a tall, dark brown animal with the legs of a zebra and the head of a giraffe. Everyone thought they were making it up. They weren't. It's the Okapi, only living relative of the giraffe because the shape of their heads. Over to the left, up on the hill, these orange-colored antelope bongos. Bongos are also known as the ghosts of the forest. They love to stay hidden away in the densely vegetated area. Both male and females will grow those back so it's more. This helps them get through the dense vegetation they go home. Towards the front left corner of the truck, up on top of the hill on the right-hand side of the road, you might see a large black and white bird. It's a saddle-built stork. They get the name for the bright yellow saddle-shaped shield up on top of their bill. But out to the left up on top of the hill, it's a black rhino in the distance. There's another one that we're going to get a little closer to, just across the water from us out to the left. But even from this distance, you can see the black rhino are pretty massive animals. They weigh about 3,000 pounds of their growth. Unfortunately, they're a rare view. They've been hunted nearly to extinction. Fewer than 5,000 of those beautiful animals are left in the world. Our reserves are trying to change that. We work with groups in Zimbabwe. They monitor the rhino, even providing veterinary treatment as needed. So hopefully they won't remain such a rare view. Back over to the right, on top of the hill, those tall, light, tan antelope hiding in the bushes are greater kudu. Kudu are the second tallest antelope in Africa. Boys would stand almost five feet tall at the shoulder. The girls were looking at it not too much shorter. Oh, I saw another saddle-built stork walking around on the hill out to the left. It's actually really rare to see more than one in an area. They're rather solitary birds. When you see two, they're almost always a mated pair. They're usually believed to mate for life. I'd like to find a few more larger animals, so we're going to go head out to the Safi River, my favorite spot to go look for hippos. Typically, we get better hippo spottings up ahead to the left, so if you're on the left, please don't worry yet. But better is a relative term when it comes to hippo spottings. You might see some eyes sticking out of the water to the right. Hey buddy, sit down please. You can sit on a lap or sit on a bench, but you gotta stay seated. I know it's exciting. We're just on a moving vehicle, but I might need to start us off very suddenly. That's just for your safety and the safety of those around you. Thank you. As you were saying, we usually get better views ahead to the left, better view. Still, hippos can stay completely under the water for about eight minutes before they need to come up for air. There is a whole group of them out to the left, just to the left of the island and by the riverbank. A group of hippos known as a bloat. A bloat of hippos. Uh, there's also a couple of different types of birds out here. Black vultures, a skinny white egret. The big gray white birds are pink-backed pelicans. They get that name because during mating season, their back turns a light pink color. They blush. little bit more worried about the next animal because we are about to drive over a really rickety bridge. Oh my goodness. It's a mallard. Across this bridge. If you look out to totally the left, those are not crocodiles. They can snap 
the bones of their prey with their powerful jaws that have a crushing force of over 2,000 pounds per square inch. I love that he says that's so happy. We're gonna die. <laughs> deeper and wildebeest, but by larger, I mean bigger, taller, not necessarily longer. From the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail, those crocodile average about 16 feet long. So we are headed away from those rivers, out towards a completely different ecosystem with completely different animals. We're going to head out to the savannah next. Speaking of different, we have a different kind of tree coming up on the right. Notice the ball about also known as the upside down tree, so you know which one it is. It kind of looks like it's got its roots sticking up in the air. Not really roots, they are branches. All buds go leafless about nine months out of the year to conserve water. We should find a few more of them out in the savannah. Keep driving around. As we drive around this corner, our first view of the savannah. The Serengeti grasslands. Look at these grasslands stretch for miles across East Africa, the home to millions of migrating animals. You're going to start to see some already. There's a whole group of giraffe in the area. Out to the right by the tree line, laying by the dirt piles, those gray animals are wildebeest. One of the largest migrations in Africa, usually hundreds of thousands are in a single group. There can be up to 1.5 million of them in one migration. So we're going to keep an eye out for more as we head around. I know the giraffe out to the right are really exciting. We are going to be looping around to try to get into the middle of the group, so I'm going to talk about them later. There's also the animals out to the right, the massive horns, which are Ancoli cattle. We're going to get a little closer to some of them, so we'll talk about them in a bit. Feel free to keep looking at all the animals out to the right. On the left, we're at one of the edges of the reserve. You might see some fencing between the two bushes. But if you look past the fencing, the black, white, kind of orange, brown color in the grasses, those are African wild dogs. They are also known as the painted dogs because of the swirled colors. They usually hunt during the early mornings and again in the late afternoons when the rising and setting sun makes them almost completely disappear. They spend the rest of their day relaxing because they're endurance runners. They can reach speeds of 55 miles per hour, and they will hold those speeds until other animals drop from exhaustion. Uh, out in the distance to the left, you're going to see some tiny light tan antelope with white undersides. Those are full-grown springbok. They only stand three feet tall. They weigh no more than 100 pounds, but they'll jump six feet in the air repeatedly when frightened or excited. They literally spring from place to place. And the animals on both sides of the road with these massive horns are the Mkoli cattle. Let's go get that 
dino. Computer, what are you tracking? Skyracosaurus. Not our dino. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little one. Oleoramus. Hadrosaur. Raptor. Time to get serious. Locking autopilot on homing signal now! This one's a vegetarian.